Hi friends! When you first see the transformerless power supply term, you might say, okay, this is just another capacitor based solution. I mean something like this capacitor in series with the mains line, then a bridge rectifier, a Zener diode, and so on. And of course, you see this solution in many cheap products that are designed to have low cost. However, this is not a good solution for the industry. This is not a reliable solution. Uh, a week ago, okay, I was repairing this washing machine board and I see it uses a transformerless power supply solution based on LNK chip. It's here. So I decided to design a circuit, a complete circuit based on this LNK chip and this is the result. It contains all sorts of uh, input protection, MOV, NTC fuse and output filter. So it's a complete solution, I can say. It converts 220 to 5 volts DC. So I will talk about this and we will build one of these together. Stay tuned. To design the schematic and PCB, I used Altium Designer 22. To find and install the missing component libraries, I used the Symaxis Altium plugin. To get high quality fabricated boards, I sent the Gerbers to PCB way. To find and purchase original components for the project, I used the component searchengine.com website. To test the current handling of the board and output stability, I used Siglent SDL1020 DC load. And finally, to examine the output noise, I used the Siglent SDS2102X Plus oscilloscope. Isn't cool? So let's get started. All right, this is the Altium Designer environment. If you don't have the Altium on your computer, there is a link in the YouTube video description where you can download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. So just visit the video description. This is the schematic diagram. Okay. And this is the PCB layout. In the schematic, this is the mains input, the mains protection, bridge rectifier, LNK chip, output filter, and the output regulator. I can explain the schematic here completely. However, it just makes the video boring. So instead of that, I explain everything in the article. So just visit the article link in the YouTube video description. If I go to the PCB, as I said, this is the input, mains input, and you can see the protection, bridge rectifier, capacitors, and do you see this isolation gap? Let me go to 3D. You see that? Show the bottom side. Uh, and this is the LED. Output is a XH connector. Nothing special here. Uh, as I said, I will explain and I have explained everything in the article. Uh, let's come back to the schematic. Uh, let, me let me tell you something about the Symax Altium plugin. When you install this plugin, you can access it from here or here, okay? And when you launch this uh, add-on, you can search for your desired component here. For example, uh, 78, this regulator, this 5 volts regulator and press enter or press the search button and there we go this is the search results and you can simply install the install your desired components 
so probably this is the desired one this is the my favorite for this project okay so uh, it is as simple as that uh, let's go to the next step I will test the circuit using some equipment all right now I want to test this board so I have connected the mains voltage to this connector. So the 220 volts mains voltage come through this mod, fuse, NTC, bridge rectifier, and the main LNK chip, output filter, and the regulator, and you can get five volts DC through this connector. And this LED shows that the output voltage is in good condition. So you can trust that everything is okay. Uh, before I go to the next step and connect the probes to this connector, I remind you because this supply is not galvanically isolated from the main, you cannot directly connect the probes to the output, otherwise you might damage your instruments. So I have powered this thing using a isolation transformer, okay? So this is not directly connected to the mains with nothing. It's comes through a 220 to 220 isolation transformer so this is the only thing only method that you can uh, safely test such things because your instruments are mains errors referenced anyway I will uh, connect the DC load to the output and the, and then the oscilloscope to check the output noise all right, this is the DC load. As you see, I have activated the constant current mode. The next thing I'm gonna do is to turn on the output and come here to increase the current. Let's start with 10 milliamps. Let's go to 50. So the output voltage is five volts as we expect. Let's go to 100 milliamps. 150, 70, 80, and there we go. 190 milliamps is the upper threshold for the chip to activate the current limit feature and turns off the output, okay? However, this doesn't mean that we can run continuously uh, 180 milliamps for the chip, okay? I mean, we cannot it doesn't this doesn't mean that we can continuously run the chip under 180 milliamp i expect for this chip to run continuously for 120 milliamps to 150 i have to test it in time i will put this dc load for one hour uh, on the output and i will check uh, the current limit for the continuous uh, operation okay because there is no time for the video to show you this uh, test on the video. I have to do it myself. I will write this in the article. So just check the article about the continuous uh, current, okay? All right, as you see, I have put the ground spring on the probe to be able to check the output noise. In the next step, I will put the probe on the output and I will enable the DC load for 150 milliamps and we will check the output noise. All right, in this step, I will uh, measure the output noise. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is to configure the oscilloscope for this uh, type of measurement. So I have connected a mouse to the oscilloscope to be able to configure it easily. First thing, I come here and change this bandwidth limit to 20 MHz and then I should come here and set the acquisition type to peak. There we go. Now I connect the probe to the output. And there we go. Let me change the times division. 
and come here and decrease the volts division so this is 20 millivolts per division uh, basically it says the peak to peak noise is 50 or 55 millivolts uh, I don't believe this is true because it detects or it picks some spikes here which actually I don't believe it belongs to the output noise uh, because this this is a switching type and they transmit a lot of rubbish also so it's pretty hard to just detect the output noise in this type of con in this condition actually non-laboratory condition so let me enable the cursor and measure the noise from here to here okay so let's come here and enable the y cursor and there we go uh, should be from here to here okay so it's around delta y is around 35 millivolts peak to peak so the maximum output noise for this power supply is 35 millivolts peak to peak for 150 milliamps which is the maximum continuous current for this uh, power supply okay anyway i hope you like this video don't forget to share and subscribe also give me a big thumbs up catch you next time